Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about how to 3D print your brain if you have a neuroimaging file that you want to print on a 3D printer. So I'm going to try to keep this video as short as possible, but I want to include a lot of information and I also have some clips and videos of my brain that I recently 3D printed and I'm going to put a bunch of links in the description box so that people can get you know the programs that they need to download and um, you can also read some tutorials which I use used to print my own brain. So I'm going to try to include a bunch of information but also keep the video short. So let me first show you guys a video of my 3D printed brain. So here is the video with me holding my brain. As you can see I only printed half of it but in this video I'll talk about how you can print your whole brain or half a brain if you want to print half. Um, that's the surface that the inside is like the surface that was built upon so it's not anatomically accurate. But yeah, that's what it looks like. Okay, so to begin, the file that we're going to get at the end is going to be a .stl file. That's a file that some 3D printers will accept directly. FreeSurfer, which is a program that's free to download and to use for neuroimaging, it's used a lot for pre-processing and statistical analysis of neuroimaging data, and it also has a function that lets you convert from your neuroimaging file to a STL file. But we don't want to convert the raw data which would be like the DICOMs or the nifties we first have to do cortical reconstruction because we want to get the surface files the files from the surface folder so I'm going to assume you're starting with a DICOM or a nifty if you're starting with a DICOM you want to convert it to a nifty there's a program called DICOM to nifty converter if you guys have any questions or if I'm skipping any steps just leave me a comment below and I'll try to answer but we're going to start with a nifty like this one so this is my brain I'm going to to open a terminal window and I have CD'd into my desktop folder which is where my nifty is to get the files for from the surface folder uh, we're going to do recon all so the steps for that is you CD into the folder that has your nifty then we're going to do recon all all so the all flag says to do the full reconstruction all the steps you need the S flag for the name of your subjects folder so I just label it like that and then you need I for the input file. This is where you're going to write the name of your nifty and that's all the flags that you need. You can play around with adding additional flags if you're familiar with FreeSurfer or if not that will start running. I'm not going to click enter because I already have a subjects folder with this file already completed but once that's done it will print out a message saying it completed without errors on the terminal and then you go to your FreeSurfer's subjects folder and you you should have um, the subjects folder created with a surface folder. So let me go ahead and pull that up because I've already done that. So mine is in documents and then subjects and so this is the one that I ran a couple of days ago and here is the surf folder that I'm talking about. So if you do auto recon all all it will print all these files for you and then you want to convert the peel files. So let me show you the two ways you can either convert a whole brain or you can do it hemisphere by hemisphere. So there is a function that is in FreeSurfer called MRIS convert. I think there used to be one called MRI convert but I was testing it the other day on FreeSurfer 6 and they might have expired it because I think you can just use MRIS convert for one file or multiple files. So I think that's like the primary function now. But anyway, actually first let me go to the subjects folder. So I cd'd into my surf folder and this has all the .peel extensions which is what I want to convert. So if you want to do a whole brain and you want to 3D print that then you do a flag called combine surfs. So this will combine multiple surfaces into one file and the two files are rh.peel and lh.peel. So this obviously stands for right hemisphere and left hemisphere and then the last thing you want to input is the name of the file. So you can call that new cortex or something and the file extension is .stl so that will take like probably just a minute to run 
and the new file has been created. Something that I've noticed, which I think might be like a bug in Free Surfer 6, is like I wanted to call it New Cortex, but it saves the file name as lh.newcortex. You can obviously just go in and change the file name, but it seems to be picking up. I don't know why it adds lh, even though I didn't write lh on there. But anyway, the file is created, and let me show you. So there's a free program that you can use um, called MeshLab. So let me show you what the file looks like so I can prove that it is indeed a whole brain. So let me find the file again. Where is it? So this is the one we just created. And if we open it up, it shows you the whole brain. And so the left and the right have been combined. And let me also quickly show you guys what it looks like if you just do the left hemisphere or the right hemisphere. So I think I already have that done in that case. So let me just show you the left hemisphere. So this is the one that I printed. I printed my left hemisphere and the file itself has the correct anatomy on the inside, but it didn't print. I don't know enough about 3D printing to know like how you can get accurate, like the base to be accurate as well, because I think I don't know about that, but anyway, that's how it would look if you just wanted to print one hemisphere like I did, in which case you can again use MRI S convert. You don't need the combined surf flags. You would just do something like that, and that will give you one of the hemispheres. So you can literally just print these files now. Like you can literally send them to a 3D printer. So I printed these at my university that has a whole lab, and I had people help me um, who know about. 3D printing so they just needed the STL file but I saw online like some tutorials saying that you can do a couple alterations before you send it to the printer so you can do that in MeshLab. MeshLab that's the second part to this tutorial basically so once you have the file let me go find it again you can simplify the number of faces of the file for example and you can do a Laplacian transform and this is just just done to simplify the outer cortex. You can either do it or not, but if you simplify it, it will make it faster to print. So the smaller and the simpler it is, it makes it easier to print. And it also, what else is the, I guess, it will, well, it'll also be cheaper, I guess that way. But you can decide for yourself whether you want to do it or not. But MeshLab has options if you go to filters. So I read, and this was mostly just based on tutorials I had read, someone did um, reduce the number of faces and you can do that this way. So if you reduce it to 150,000 faces, let me show you how that will change the surface. Okay, so if you can see that kind of made it a little bit more of a smooth surface. It reduced the complexity and you can also do a Laplacian transform, which again will just smooth out the number of points. So if you do it one time, then you will have something that looks like that. I think for me, since I only printed uh, one hemisphere, I didn't bother reducing the number of faces, but I did do a Laplacian transform before I sent it to the printer. Okay, so those are like the main two parts. The third part of this video, I guess I wanted to share some photos and videos that I took of while it was printing because like I said, I printed this at a university lab. So I talked to some people who know about 3D printing and they gave me some advice. So one of the things they told me, and you can try to look up like pro a lot of public libraries nowadays even have 3D printers or you can order your prints online. Or if you're a university student like me, you can probably find a 3D printer on campus. So they, my university has a whole lab. They told me, for example, to print it hemisphere by hemisphere because at first they were looking at printing it whole and they just noticed that the base would not be very good. They basically were kind of worried that if they printed it, the print would fail because there's a way of checking like how many points you have on a base and they told me it would be stilted, which could um, be bad for the print. So they suggested to me to split it hemisphere by hemisphere and print it like that and that would be better for the base and it printed just fine so I guess they were right although I've seen a lot of people online print the whole brain so I'm sure there's a way of doing it as well and you could probably try it even if it's stilted and maybe it would still work 
what other suggestions did they do? So if there's a program that they put into, I think it was called Cura, C-U-R-A, um, that they, they input it into Cura and then look at it and see how long it's going to take to print. For me, they scaled, I so I only printed half of my brain, so the left hemisphere, and they scaled it to 50%. And that took four hours, and as you'll see in the photos. So they also charged me by how many grams it was. And yeah, I think it was by grams. It's not necessarily by hours, but obviously the bigger it is, the longer it takes. What else did I want to did I want to say? Yeah, so that's kind of my explanation for printing only half. Yeah, and so you might want to consider like talking to people who know about 3D printing to see like what's the way, best way to print, but this STL file is like the standard that's used or one of the standards that's used for any 3D printer. And yeah, let me end the video now with just showing like some photos and videos of me in the lab and that will be the end of this video.